Um, so hi everyone, um, my name is Jamie Woodcock, I'm a researcher based in London uh, and I'm also an editor of Notes From Below, uh, a workers' inquiry journal that's based here in the UK. Um, first off I want to say uh, thank you to Lorenzo for inviting me to, to come and speak with you, uh, albeit uh, not being able to be there in person and, and, and sending a recorded video. And I also want to send a message of solidarity to uh, to all the workers taking strike action on the on the 23rd of October. Um, there's a couple of things that I wanted to talk about, um, and you know some of it is about about the current context uh, about COVID-19 and the pandemic. And then I also wanted to say a couple of things about workers' inquiry more generally, um, and about class composition um, and its use today. I think the first thing to say is we're in a moment that none of us expected to be in, uh, that none of us had prepared to be in. Um, you know, I was thinking back the other day to when when the lockdown first started. Um, and in the UK, we said it would be two or three weeks. And I remember thinking at the time, that's a huge amount of time uh, to have a lockdown. Um, and of course, now here we are uh, seven months later and in London, we're preparing to go into another lockdown. And I think the experience of the pandemic uh, has been very different for different groups of workers in different sectors and, of course, in different countries. Um, and I think this is where inquiry can play uh, a really important role, is whilst some of us have been in lockdown, you know, not leaving our homes or not leaving our local neighbourhoods, others have had to carry on working, uh, the kinds of conditions under which people are working are even more hidden than they perhaps are during non-pandemic times. And so I think inquiry provides us with a way to try and access what those experiences have been under the pandemic, to understand how workers have responded, uh, how communities have tried to organise in response to this, uh, and the ways in which the state, capital, employers have tried to use this crisis as a moment to uh, to decompose parts of the workers' movement uh, and to attack terms and conditions to try and bring in changes that they otherwise would have uh, would have perhaps thought twice about. One of the things that I was really pleased recently to be a part of with Notes From Below is bringing together a collection uh, of different inquiries from, uh, from mainly from across Europe, but also, uh, also a bit further afield from, from Brazil and from the US as well to share experiences of what the pandemic uh, has been like from, from workers' perspectives. Um, and you can find this on the, on the Notes From Below website. Um, unfortunately, it's not uh, been translated into, into Italian, but it's in, in English, uh, in French, and, and parts of it are in, in Portuguese. To try and share some of those experiences, um, you know, particularly around how workers have responded, uh, the kinds of demands that they've made, um, examples of where workers' struggles have broken out, have been successful, but also thinking about what the pandemic means for the kinds of demands that we make, um, the kinds of things that we should, be, we should be asking for. And so I think we can see a number of, you know, across Europe um, and also, you know, within particular areas, we can see a number of dynamics emerging um, as a result of, of the COVID-19 pandemic. And I want to speak here particularly about some of those that we've seen in the UK. Um, I do some organising with a union uh, called IWGB, um, which organises with, with cleaners, with security guards, Uber drivers, delivery couriers and so on. And during the pandemic, uh, the union established a general members branch. Um, so a branch that people can join from, from any sector. And I think what's been particularly notable um, is whilst helping out with this branch is the number of people who are coming forward at the moment who are saying, you know, I thought about organising at work before or, you know, I'd started a WhatsApp group uh, or, I'd, you know, I'd been in the early stages of, uh, of thinking that I should, should get organised and should, should have those conversations with people. But, you know, I put it off. Um, you know, I thought there would be another time where it would be better and, you know, we could, we could get get to it slowly slowly and I think what the, the pandemic has proven for many people is a kind of flashpoint um, 
of showing what their level of organization is like in the workplace, um, or unfortunately for the majority of, of workers in the UK, how little organization they have in the workplace. So when things like furlough came in, uh, so people being paid a proportion of their income and, uh, uh, and sent home, you know, this was a very uneven process. Um, some people got furlough, some didn't. Um, the, the conditions under which it happened were often, uh, often quite confusing. For those people who had to go into work, you know, there were often inadequate safety checks or, or, or lack of protective equipment or so on. And so in lots and lots of examples of workplaces, people are being pushed further than they have been before by management and are finding uh, that they're fighting back, but perhaps they haven't been prepared in the way that they want to. And so across the holding branch, there are examples of, uh, of groups of workers who uh, haven't been organised previously. Um, so people from the creative sector, um, you know, people doing things like yoga teaching or, 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 or working in gyms as trainers, um, you know, people in warehouses that haven't been organised by mainstream unions, um, you know, people on, on building sites that remained operating during the pandemic. Um, and then lots of informal kinds of work like childminding or nannies, the kinds of work that are particularly affected by a pandemic. And so what I don't want to do is to overemphasise this tendency and say that all over the UK, there are now uh, groups of unorganised workers who are coming forward, who are, uh, who are spontaneously getting organised and, and, and joining unions. But I think what this has really shown, that if a union is able to say, join us, you know, and the IWGB is very clear about how people join this holding branch, is to say, join us. We're not going to do the organising for you. Uh, we don't have the answers for your sector, but we can support you to find out what organising looks like uh, for you and you, the people you work with, uh, to share experiences and lessons from elsewhere. And people take this, you know, people who've joined have taken this opportunity and really run with it. And so I think, you know, the decline at least in the UK, of the, of the mainstream trade unions, is often said that people don't want to organise, um, that they're unorganisable in some way. And I think what the pandemic has really shown is that when people are able to take that initiative um, and, you know, perhaps are supported in the right ways by uh, people who've been through previous waves of struggle or, or institutions of the labour movement in various ways, these sectors are far, far from unorganisable. I guess the question perhaps is, what kind of strategy we can begin developing um, as, as the left, as, as participants in the labour movement, to move from those small examples of people coming forward, joining a union, beginning to get organised, to a much wider uh, working class response to the pandemic. Uh, because in the UK, at least, that's, that's likely to continue for, for a very, very long time. And I also think one of the things we need to make sense of is how we connect the kinds of fights in the workplace um, to these broader questions around health. Um, as I said, lots of people have been pushed into, uh, into taking action because of the risks to their health in the workplace. But you know, if, if the pandemic goes away, uh, I mean, I don't think we're ever gonna return to normal, but you know, if the pandemic becomes managed in a, uh, in a way that allows uh, people to go back to the workplace in, in ways that they have before, there's still a continuing ecological crisis. And so finding ways to connect, you know, the struggles that particularly lots of younger workers are coming with around, uh, around climate change, around ecological destruction, um, around, in the UK, the unfairness recently over, over using algorithms to decide their, their school grades and a, a scandal that broke up around that. Uh, finding ways to connect these broader struggles to workplace struggles and workplace organising. Um, and, you know, finally, what I want to say is, you know, in terms of where we see struggle going or, or, or upcoming struggles uh, in the UK, um, there are likely to be, you know, forms of action in, in, in education um, because of how uh, affected it's been by the pandemic. Uh, but at the moment, it's far from clear what those will look like, similarly with healthcare and so on. And so I think a moment like this, to return to what I said at the beginning, is a moment where inquiry can be particularly useful. Um, so Notes From Below has recently published a, a collection of, of workers' inquiries, uh, 11 different inquiries, most from the UK, looking at different sectors uh, and supporting workers to write up their own experience of the work, 
but also how they began organizing. Um, and you can find this, it's called From the Workplace, um, and it's a, it's a collection that we've published at, at Notes from Below. And for us, the next stage is to start thinking about this challenge of how, how do smaller groups of militants um, use something like inquiry to build connections with groups of workers, to help them to tell their stories, to, to share their experiences of organising, to a broader analysis of, the, of changes in capitalism today. So how do we take what are essentially snapshots of working class experience and build an analysis of how class composition uh, has changed? And so we're planning to do another wave of, of, of inquiries, you know, particularly into sectors that are you know, not the fashionable sectors for the left, so not looking at gig work or Uber driving or so on, but looking at things like uh, care work and agriculture or infrastructural work to try and understand what is happening uh, with the working class and with class composition in the UK. Um, and I think that, you know, there's no guarantee that that will lead on to, uh, on to engaging in those struggles or, or, or so on. But what it does do is begin to chart out a path for how that kind of, how, how we as, the, uh, as a smaller group of militants can think about intervening within those struggles. Um, and so any exchanges with other groups that are thinking of, uh, of doing inquiries or are doing their own inquiries and want to, to exchange on that topic, um, we'd, be, we'd be very happy to, to do that as notes from below. Um, so thanks again for inviting me to come and talk uh, and solidarity for, for the strike coming up in October. Thank you.